Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. We have a lot to get into as normal, including we'll talk about pit coaching search. Where is it headed? And what does it look like from a national point of view? We'll get into that. We're going to also talk about the Penguins and how important it is to win a division. Washington lost today, so there's only two points separating first and second. Same amount of games. But the number one topic tonight on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be free agency in the NFL. One week in the books and the Steelers. Well, they signed someone today. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But here is your panel left to right on your television screen. We have Chris Mack to the left, 93.7 The Fan. Pre and post game host of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Ron Cook from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette and the Cook and Pony Show on the fan, and Mr. Tim Benz, triblive.com. Are you Syracusing me? I am. Okay, I figured you were. As we just Syracuse. did to we, 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 we all got Syracuse, Syracuse today, Pump. <laughs> we all got Syracuse. You today. know what that zone does, though? It just makes other teams just kind of stall in their own. Uh, space. I mean, it's unbelievable what it does. It has a mesmerizing effect, and Jim Beheim knows how to do it well. We'll get into that in a second. But first, we're going to talk about the Steelers. Ron Cook, they come away with one guy today. It's John Bostick. Now, last year, he led the Colts with 97 tackles. He's an inside linebacker, two-year uh, deal, but he's also been with five teams in five years, and that's pretty much it so far. Are you surprised with the lack of movement? Yeah, I am. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say uh, th that I am because the Steelers historically don't do much. I, I, when Tyran, Tyran Matthew became available last week, I thought there was no chance the Steelers could get him. Uh, they couldn't get him under the cap because of the levy on Bell deal. And then he says he wants to go play for a winner. I'm thinking, okay, the team football matters. I'm thinking Steelers still can't get him under the cap. Then he signs a one-year, $7 million deal with Houston. I think the Steelers could have done that, uh, Bob, and then kept uh, Le'Veon Bell also. Um, I, I'm a little surprised they didn't push more for it. Or, you know the players wanted him. They don't care much about caps. So I get that. But I thought at that price they had a chance to get him and keep Le'Veon Bell too. Bob, to use a Tomlinism, globally speaking, uh, no, I'm not surprised because to Ron's point, uh, this is kind of how the Steelers operate. They don't tend to make a big splash in free agency. In fact, uh, I'm still surprised to this day that they were as aggressive as they were going after Dante Hightower last year. But I guess they had the feeling that this was going to be a position of need even before Ryan Shazier got hurt. This move with Bostick, this strikes me as like, I don't know, when Kieran Fox came here, maybe uh, as a backup at the inside line, like an Arthur Motes almost. Uh, yeah, the Motes on the guy, outside. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I still think they're going to address that need with the first round draft pick. Uh, I do think that this is a more likely fit all along than what people were saying with that Avery Williamson guy. Uh, I thought he was overpaid to be a marginal player. So this move fits a little bit better to me. The surprise to me, kind of echoing the Matthew thought going down that train, not just him that None of the safeties have really moved. Uh, I believe at this time, what, Burnett hasn't been signed. Vaccaro is still out there. Trey Boston is still out there. All those guys that we thought made sense for the Steelers or other teams to get at safety, that market hasn't been plumbed yet at all, not just by Pittsburgh, but anybody else in the National Football League. They had an opportunity, guys, to, to give themselves a little bit of insurance at those two spots that we know they're going to focus on the first two days of the draft, inside linebacker and safety. So they go out and get Bostic. Okay, great. Leading tackler on one of the worst defenses in the league last Last year. Uh, they can plug him in if they have to, if they don't find the inside linebacker they like. But to Ron's point, the Tyron Matthew non-move is just flabbergasting to me. Last year, when Joe Hayden was sprung loose from Cleveland, on the eve of the season, you went out and you got him. You made the move happen. Matthew is the same thing. You put Matthew and Sean Davis together as the safeties in this defense. Matthew can play up high. He can come down in the box and play the run. He can line up in the slot sometimes if you want him to in a dime package. He can do it all. He's a jack of all trades. He wanted to go to a winner, as Ron said. And he signs for $7 million. They got six and a half in cap space. They, they probably wouldn't have even really had to move anything around to make it happen. That's Kevin Colbert. I'm sorry. He doesn't make a ton of terrible mistakes. That's a bad mistake. So by Kevin. Do well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe do they didn't injuries? trust his injury history. History, right? Yeah, but injury histories are everybody. Le'Veon Bell he got has a one-year deal. Yeah, I think he took a one-year deal because he, he has to prove himself. He, he played all 16 games last year, uh, but he, he three of his last five years have ended up on uh, injured reserve, two knee injuries and a shoulder injury. That's a little bit concerning. He did play all of last year. I think he wants to show he's healthy, have a great year, and then he can hit a home run at next year in free. Yeah, Chris, don't get me wrong. I agree with you. I think that they should have gone after him. My eyes popped when I saw that. And just to take your point even one step further here, uh, 
you know, there's a lot of people out there blaming Le'Veon Bell for Tyron Matthew not being here. Now, I don't know what the level of interest was from the Steelers. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head if he wanted to come here. He just preferred Houston or what the story was. But this isn't Le'Veon Bell's fault because he made 12, what, 6 or 12-1, whatever it was against the cap last year, and they offered Dante Hightower somewhere between 8 and 9. He was just 7 this year, and the value for Bell on the franchise tag just went up to 14.5. And to your point before, Chris, they could have moved the money around easily enough to make that happen if they wanted to for this player. My guess is they just didn't want the player. He didn't and, want to come here. And huh? I think the kicker, too, is that they're so thin in the secondary now. After releasing the three guys they released last week, I know a lot of people would tell you Mike Mitchell's not going to help you win a Super Bowl. That's fine. Will Gay, uh, twilight of his career. Robert Golden, we never really saw out of him what uh, – some people may have wanted to, but they're desperately thin at safety right now. So well, it, it all made sense. They have to draft somebody there and at inside linebacker. I mean, those are two positions in need. Free agency is still ongoing. We'll see. But uh, I'm a little disappointed. I really think Matthew would have helped him. All right, let's talk to Le'Veon Bell since you guys brought him up, too. He's still a talking point in that. Um, he's got that franchise tag now. And to me, it seems Dustin's going to end that way. One more year, and then he'll be done. Uh, and I want to ask you about the smart move there on his part or not, Tim, because you looked at a couple of free agent running backs who got nice deals, and most people don't even know who they are. Paul Richardson, I was checking $40 million, uh, for a guy who's only had one 1,000-yard season. And you had uh, Jarek McKinnon, who's never played and started more than seven games. And he's signed for $15 million. Uh, $30 million, 15 guaranteed. So is Le'Veon Bell looking at this saying, next year, man, I'm going to cash in big. Someone will be willing to give me a multiple-year deal at money that the Steelers just won't approach. Yes, I think a lot of what's happened so far in his mind has validated his approach. Uh, if it's me, I'm still very comfortable being a running back with a $13.3 million offer that he got last year that even his mother told him to sign. So if it were me, I would have been fine with that contract. And I think all of us wouldn't be second guessing the deal if it was done and he was on paper as being the Steelers running back moving forward. But, you know, I don't think, uh, what's his name, David Norwell, the guard that was signed in free agency by Jacksonville, he's not going to make the argument, I'm going to play center and guard at the same time, like Levis saying, I'm a running back <laughs> and a wide receiver. So I think he feels bolstered by what's happened because he's looking at the money out there and suggesting I uh, made a pretty good point in what I was saying before about what my value is. It's still a big gamble on his part, though, if he gets hurt. I mean, a major injury. He won't get a gamble. big yep. deal next year. If, if he gets through this year, has another good year, uh, he'll cash in somewhere. It won't be with the Steelers unless they do the long-term deal before this season, and I don't see him coming down or them going up. I think they signed him for one more year to take a crack at it with Roethlisberger and Antonio and that offensive line and figure they can plug the holes on defense. I'm all in favor of it. I want him on my team. I don't like letting guys go for nothing uh, as free agents, especially a talented player like him. I get it that he's making a huge amount of money. I want to take a shot with him one more time. Yeah, and you mentioned that Super Bowl window, Ron. That's where he's creating this leverage, and he's, he's played the leverage to the hilt. He's done it perfectly. You have to give him credit for that. He knows that this team is up against it as far as how many more cracks they have at it with Roethlisberger and Brown together, and he knows that the offense obviously is better with him in it, so he's going to force them to franchise him, and then he's going to walk off and get paid next year. If, and to your point, the Steelers probably aren't going to match it. They, they just won't do something like that because someone's going to come around the corner and offer him 16, 17 million, something ridiculous uh, I a don't year. know about that, Chris. I don't know if he's going to get that high. Uh, I, I think he's going to have a hard time finding what he wants from any team. He's still going to get a big payday, but I don't know that anybody's going to pay him almost double what other running backs are getting. And plus, he's got to, he'll have a year more of wear and tear on his body by that. Yeah, point. 400 more he touches. He touched it 406 times yeah. this year. You know, I, this is how valuable it is to the offense. I, I'm not a math major from Northwestern, but I believe he touched the ball 40% of their offensive plays mm -hmm. and produced 31% of their offensive yards. That's a lot to place and that's going to be I think that's the key to, to some it takes one team to create a market we talk about that all the time it's going to take one team to come around the corner looking to change the the fate of their franchise well, the Steelers already did with 13.3 million dollars on the table last year they created the market right right so th that's my point is with the way we've seen things gone this uh, off season, just this past week and a half in free agency I, I don't doubt that someone might come around and give them just a ridiculous uh, offer like that 
All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the hot topic, which is the pit basketball search. But before we do, I want to remind you, spring is a great time to be a sports fan in Pittsburgh, but it's also a great time to drive home a winner from number one Cochrane because right now, during their spring for a new car event, you'll get special offers on all models, plus an extra 750 bucks over Kelly Blue Book value for your trade. But hurry, your trade deadline coming up is March 31st at all number one Cochrane locations and Cochrane.com. Back with basketball talk next. The number one Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by number one Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 